Hey guys, I'm very excited about this tutorial because we're going to show you how to create this automatic image slider. We're going to be doing this with a library called Tiny Slider, but we're actually going to go beyond Tiny Slider and we're going to show you how to create this cool hover effect when you hover over your slides. Alright guys, before we begin, we want to bring in the Tiny Slider CDN. So let's open up our browser and we're going to search for tiny slider CDN. All right, you're going to click on the link by cdnjs.com. And we're going to need these two first URLs. So we're going to copy the first one and let's go up here. We're going to create a script and then we're going to control V to paste that in there. All right, let's copy the other one. We can exit out of here. And then for this one, instead of a script tag, we're gonna create a link. We're just gonna paste that in there. All right, we're all set up. Now we can begin writing our HTML. All right, the first thing we're going to create is a section and we're gonna give this an ID of slider. All right, and of course we wanna make this responsive on big screen sizes. So we're gonna use this class name of container together with this one with the name of subcontainer to make it responsive on big screen sizes. All right, now we're gonna create a, a wrapper that is gonna hold the title of our slider and also the slider itself. So we're gonna give this a name of slider wrapper. All right, and the first thing we're gonna add is the title, or not really a title, but just something that is gonna go right on top of the slider. In this case, it's gonna say frequently searched but this could be whatever you want. I'm just giving you an example of what you can do here. All right, and let's add a space. And now we're gonna create the actual slider. This one is gonna have a class name of my slider. All right, and in here, let's create a empty pair of div tags. Well, not an empty pair. We're not gonna give them a class, but inside of here is where we're gonna create our first slide. And we're gonna give it a class name of slide. All right, so this is our slide. And of course, this is gonna have two things. It's gonna have the image and it's gonna have information about the image. In our case, we're gonna be adding images about different cities around the world. So let's start this off by giving our image a class name of slide IMG. And this image is actually gonna have two class names. The other one is gonna be IMG-1 and that's because each image is going to have a different picture. So we want to be able to access this individual class in CSS and give it its own image. All right. And in here, we're going to add a link and this is going to take the user over to another page. That's going to have more information about this particular city. Now, this is uh, completely optional, but I decided to add this in just so you can see that you can customize this. Um, image slider beyond what is included with the tiny slider CDN. All right, so we have the image and underneath, let's create another div. And this is where the name of the country or state where the city is located. In this case, it's Hawaii. I should have added United States there, but eh, we'll be fine. All right, and this is gonna be the island of Maui. All right, so this is one of our slides from this div that doesn't have a class to this empty uh, div tag here. So what we're gonna do is just, we're just gonna select that and we're gonna shift alt down four times to copy this four times. So one, two, three, four. So we should have a total of five slides. All right, this is the first one. For the second one, we're gonna change this from image one to image two, and we're gonna change the, the country or the state here. For image two, I'm gonna use the country of Fiji. And I know that there's a, a city there called Suva, I believe that's how you pronounce it. All right, let's keep it moving. This is image number three. And this is in Florida. This is gonna be Miami. Let's move on to image number four. And 
this is going to be Costa Rica. And there's a city here called San Jose. All right, and for the last slide, this is image number five. And for this one, we're going to go with Brazil. And the city is Rio de Janeiro. All right, and that's it for our HTML. All right, and here I'm going to start off by bringing in the Google Font API. There's a particular font that I want to use. So I'm just going to control V to paste it in here. This is completely optional. You don't need to use this font. I just thought it would be nice if I added it. So you can go ahead and use whatever font you want, or if you want to use this one, then just go ahead and copy that. All right, now we're going to set the margin of all of our elements to zero. For the body, we're going to change the font family to the one that we just brought in. And of course, if you want to use a different font, then go ahead and just change that to whatever you want. All right, let's get access to the slider section. We give it an ID of slider. And this is where we're going to set the height of our section here. So let me add a border just so you can see it. And the reason that I'm doing this is so you can see that you can add this slider to a particular section of your website. And usually I like to use a height of 500 pixels, but of course you can you know, change that to, to it being taller or even shorter, completely up to you. All right, now let's place the contents within this section in the center. So we're gonna use display flex, justify content center, and align item center. All right, now we wanna make this responsive on big screens. So for our container, we're gonna set the width to 1600 pixels and margin auto. All right, and to make it responsive, completely responsive on big screen sizes, we're gonna use this subcontainer. And for this one, we're gonna set a width of 85% and margin auto. All right, since we are using a width of 1600 pixels here, this is not gonna be responsive on small screen sizes. So let's add a media query. And this is gonna be at 1600 pixels. So when we're at 1600 pixels, or when we're at smaller than 1600 pixels, I should say, we're gonna set that width of 1600 pixels to 100%, All right? So that's gonna make it responsive on big screen sizes and on small screen sizes. All right, let's move on to the uh, container that has the actual image, All right? For this one, Let's set the width to 100%. And this is very important. This is where you're gonna set your height of your image. I'm gonna go with 275 pixels, but go ahead and change that to whatever you want. And I also want this image to have round edges. So border radius five pixels. Now let's actually add the image. So background position center and background size cover is gonna make our image look nice and neat within this container course we're going to add the image later let's complete the CSS properties that we want to add here all right we're going to add cursor pointer <clears throat> and let's also use a uh, flex box in here so let's do justify content center align item center and we're also going to add a transition of 0 0.5 seconds so why are we adding a flex box in here on the image wall remember we have this learn more so we want it to be right in the center of the image that's why we're adding flex box there all right let's add a hover effect to the image and of course we want it to have a box shadow when we hover over the the act the image so we're gonna add a box shadow and we're gonna go with zero 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 200 pixels and I'm gonna use the color black. Go ahead and go with whatever color you want. Just make sure it's not a solid color, otherwise you won't be able to see the image. So 0 0.9 is, is good, I think. And you also have to use inset there. All right, let's move on. So for the A link, 
for the a tag initially we want it to have a opacity of zero because we want to we don't, we don't want to be able to see it until we hover it uh, text or decoration none and let's add a transform scale of zero and a transition of 0 0.8 seconds so this all has to do with the effect that's going to take place when we hover the image all right let's do font size uh 1.5 rem and let's change the color to white all right let's add all right let's add a hover effect to the link so at this point we want to set opacity to one and transform to scale one and that's that's because we want it to pop out when we hover over the image All right and one final thing we have to do is of course add the images so let's get access to the first class of img1 we're going to do background image url and i already have the urls to the images that i'm going to be using for this project so i'm just going to copy and paste them in here you can go ahead and use whatever images that you want or i'm going to leave a link in the description to these urls that way you can just copy this in case you want to use these all right all right so i'm just going to control you to paste that in there and i'm going to copy this four times so shift alt one two three four and i'm going to change this to two I'm going to copy this link and paste it here. All right. This is image number three. Number four. And number five. And of course you can add as many images as you want i'm just adding five for this tutorial all right so so far we've added a lot of css properties in here but they have nothing to do with the tiny slider so in order to use the tiny slider we have to actually add it with javascript so let's move on to our javascript all right so now we're actually going to bring in the tiny slider before we do, I actually forgot to add something in our HTML. So let's go back to that file. And in between the image and the information about the image or the, the name of the city, we're going to add a, a BR element. So we're going to do that for each one. All right, and that's just going to ensure that there's a little space between the image and the information there. All right. All right. Now let's actually make use of the tiny slider. So to use it, we have to create a variable. We're going to call it slider. It could be called whatever you want. And we're going to use this thing called TNS. So the reason that we could use this is because we brought in the tiny slider CDN. So in here, we're going to set the options of our tiny slider. So there's a bunch of different options that you can use. But I'm going to be showing you the ones that you use if you want to make an automatic image slider. All right. So the first thing we have to do is indicate where are our slides located. And we stored them in a class called my slider. All right. So that's the first thing. The second thing we're going to do is since this is going to be an automatic image slider, how many images do we want to skip each time the carousel moves around we're gonna set that to one go ahead and change that to whatever you want now we're gonna set the speed how quick do we want this to be i'm gonna go with 400 milliseconds go ahead and change that to whatever you want and notice that we have this these buttons here well we don't want to be able to see those so we're gonna set nav to false and now we have two buttons called previous and next, but we're not going to need those because this is going to be an automatic image slider. So to make it automatic, we use the option of autoplay. 
and we're gonna set that equal to true. All right, now let's remove these these previous or the previous and next button. So we're gonna set controls to false and that should get rid of those two buttons. But now we have this stop button and we also wanna get rid of that one because if we don't get rid of it as the image slider is moving, the user can actually click stop and it, it'll stop being automatic. Like it's not gonna go to the next slide. So we don't want that. We want it to keep going. So we're gonna set autoplay button output to false. All right, and the final thing we're gonna add is an option of responsive. So in here we have to indicate how many images do we want this carousel to display depending on how many pixels we have on the screen. So at 1600 pixels, I want there to be four images and we use this items to indicate images. So we want it to have four. Of course, you can change that to something else. And I'm also going to add something else called gutter. This gutter is the amount of padding that there's going to be between the images. So I'm going to go with 20. All right. And as we resize the window to get smaller, of course, I don't want there to be as many images on the screen. I want it to decrease by one. So we're at 1000. 24 pixels I want to change items to 3 and I'm going to keep the gutter at 20 if I don't add it here it'll actually get rid of it so I have to keep adding it all right let's keep moving here at 768 pixels I'm going to change items to 2 and let's add the gutter as well All right, we're gonna add one final one at 480 pixels. So at this point, we wanna set items to one. And that's pretty much it. So let's resize this. And there we go. There's our image slider and it's automatic. And notice that it's just moving by one. So it's just moving one over. If you would have added a two there, then it would be moving two slides over so go ahead and uh, play with that and if you notice that your image slider is a little bit slow it's because we're using these url images that are actually very big so i actually recommend for you to resize these images download them resize them to this particular size and this will be pretty fast all right let me resize this so you can see what happens as we resize this so as you can see, there's only three images there because we're at a smaller screen size. As we get smaller, this is gonna change to two. And once we get to a certain width, it's only gonna be one, all right? So if you're wondering about these settings here, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to the documentation so you can see the rest of the settings. There's actually quite a, quite a lot. So you can customize this a lot of different ways, all right? So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Please make sure to hit the like button if you found this useful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.